Hello friends, this video on State of Matter Part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 25. So the question says 2.9 gram of gas, one gas at 95 degrees Celsius occupies the same volume as my 0.184 gram of dihydrogen at 70 degrees Celsius at the same pressure. We have to find the molar mass of the so if you see the question says 2.9 gram of gas x at 95 degrees celsius let it occupies the volume v 0 0.184 gram of hydrogen gas at 70 degrees celsius also occupies volume v both are same right and here pressure is also same find the molar mass of the gas. The formula we know that Pv is equal to nRT. Instead of n, we'll use mass by molar mass into RT. Here my P and V is constant. Right? P and V is constant. So P1 into V1 is also constant. So I can say that my P1, V1 will be equal to P2, P2. Why? Because my P and V is constant in both cases. Or I can say that P1, V1 is nothing but M1 into capital M1 into RT1 is equal to M2 capital M2 RT2 R a cancel. So for this is my gas X and this is my hydrogen. So for gas X, my mass was 2.9 gram. Right? So it will be. What I have to find? I have to find the molar mass of the gas. I have to find this M1. So let's put the formula first. M1 will come out to be M1 will go here. So it will be M1 into T1 by M2 into T2 into capital M. This is what I will get. Right? So M1 is my X gas. X gas is 2.9 gram. 2.9 gram into T1, 95 degrees Celsius, you convert this, 95 plus 273, you get uh, 368 Kelvin. By M2, mass of M2 is 0 0.184 gram. T2 is 70 degrees Celsius, you add 273 to this, you get uh, 290 Kelvin. Into M2, that is the molar mass of oxygen, that is sorry, more of the dihydrogen that is 2 gram gram cancel, Kelvin Kelvin cancel. So, if you solve this, you get 40 gram per mole, right? Because this is 2 gram per mole. So, you get 40 gram per mole with a molar mass of this gas. A mixture of dihydrogen H2 and dioxygen. At one bar pressure contains 20% by weight of dihydrogen. That is, this is 20% and this is 80%. We need to find the partial pressure of dihydrogen. So let's assume total is 100 gram. So in that case, my hydrogen will be 20. Hydrogen is 20%, so it will be 20 gram. And oxygen will be 80 gram. Right? Because 20% is the hydrogen, 80% is the so to find the partial pressure, I should know the moles of hydrogen. So let's find the first moles of hydrogen. So moles of hydrogen in this case will be 20 by molar mass, that is 2, that is 10 moles. If you want to find the moles of oxygen, it will be what? 80 by the molar mass of uh, oxygen, that is 32, that is 2.5 moles. So I have 10 moles of hydrogen and 2.5 moles of oxygen. Total pressure is how much? 1 bar. So P total is 1 bar. So partial pressure of hydrogen will be what? Moles of hydrogen by total moles into total pressure. So moles of hydrogen is what? Moles of hydrogen will be uh, 10. 
टोटल मोल इज टेन प्लस टू पॉइंट फाइव टोटल प्रेशर इज वन इफ सॉल्व दिस कम्स आउट टू पॉइंट एट बार सिमिलरली पॉइंट प्रेशर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन विल बी वॉट प्रेशर टोटल माइनस प्रेशर हाइड्रोजन दिस विल बी वन माइनस पॉइंट एट बार दैट इज पॉइंट टू बार एंड दिस इज माइनस इज यू ऑनली सी फॉर फाइंडिंग द पार्शनल प्रेशर टू फाइंड द मोल्स So what we did was since it was given twenty percent, we have hydrogen, eighty percent oxygen. We assume that total weight is one hundred gram, and with that we can find the assumed moles of hydrogen and oxygen. So once we have assumed moles of hydrogen and oxygen, and we have total pressure, we can easily find the partial pressure. What would be the SI unit of quantity P V two T square by n? Actually, it's T square by. So what is the pressure SI unit Newton per meter square? This is pressure. Volume will be in meter cube. Temperature. It is temperature square actually. I think. Yeah. Two, two, two. It doesn't matter, right? Two is two is a unit. It doesn't matter. There is no unit for two. And temperature is uh, Kelvin. So it is temperature square. So it will be K square. K square by n n is in mole, so it will be mole. So the SI unit will be n meter square meter cube into meter to the minus two will become it is volume square actually. It's volume square. This P V square T square by n. So it will become newton meter to the power six into minus two six plus minus two is four. So meter to the power four Kelvin square per mole. That will be the answer. Easy. It is P V square T square by. Let's take one example. In terms of Charles' law, explain why minus two seventy three is the lowest possible temperature. So minus two seventy three degrees Celsius is nothing but you know Charles' law deals with Kelvin. So this plus two seventy three Kelvin. Right, the zero Kelvin. I say volume is directly proportional to temperature. So if my temperature is zero, volume is zero, I can't have a negative value. Can't have negative value. Right. So I can't have negative temperature in the Charles equation. So in Charles equation, temperature is in Kelvin. So the maximum, the minimum value of uh, T I can have is zero Kelvin, and zero Kelvin is nothing but minus two seventy three degrees Celsius. This is the minimum possible temperature as per Charles' law. Critical temperature of carbon dioxide and methane are this and this, which has stronger intermolecular force and why? See, it's obvious that since the critical temperature is higher for carbon dioxide, that means carbon dioxide has stronger intermolecular force. Because if we talk about let's suppose twenty degrees Celsius at twenty degrees of so if you take this example, let's take a temperature between these values twenty degrees Celsius minus eight point nine and thirty one point. So at twenty degrees Celsius, my carbon dioxide will be in the liquid form. Why? Because it is below the critical temperature. But my methane will be in the gas form only. So now at 20 degrees Celsius, if you observe, you forget these values now. At 20 degrees Celsius, if you observe, my carbon dioxide is liquid and this is gas. That means intermolecular force is high in carbon dioxide because it's liquid. It is intermolecular force is low in methane because it's gas. See, it's very easy actually. You take a temperature between these two and then you you try to visualize the state of these two gases at 20 degrees Celsius. You can take 10 also because it's between these two or zero also. So, any other temperature between these two, we find that carbon dioxide will be liquid and CH4 will be gas, and that that can be called that. Okay, carbon dioxide is liquid, that means it has more stronger intermolecular force. Methane is a gas, that means it has weaker intermolecular force. We have to explain the significance of Van der Waal parameter. So, we have two parameters A and B in that uh, equation. So, A will give you the magnitude of intermolecular force.
intermolecular force and B will be giving you volume of gas molecules. We told that we assume that the volume of gas molecule is negligible. Please don't, I talk about volume of gas molecule is not negligible. I don't say the volume of gas is negligible. In fact, volume of gas is too much compared to volume of gas molecule. So we used to consider in ideal gas equation, volume of gas molecule to be zero, but in real gas it is not zero. So we have this constant B, which denotes the volume of gas molecule and A denotes the magnitude of intermolecular force because in uh, the real ideal gas equation, we consider that the intermolecular force is zero, but in the real gas, it is not zero. So we have these two parameters. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.